that this is the first briefing about being on the surface of the, of the moon uh, for the first time in about 52 years in this room. So that's quite incredible, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Intuitive Machines, uh, Odysseus Lander landed yesterday at 524 uh, Central Time. Uh, we did have a stable, controlled landing and a safe, soft touchdown. So just to begin with, uh, the vehicle is uh, stable uh, near or at our intended landing site. Uh, we do have communications with the, uh, with the lander. It's from the larger radio astronomy dishes around the world that are part of our uh, lunar telemetry network um, and to the spacecraft from several of the antennas and two of the radios. So that's phenomenal to begin with. So we're beginning to, uh, now that we're on the Goonhilly dish in the United Kingdom, uh, we're downloading and commanding, downloading data from the, from the buffers in the spacecraft and commanding the spacecraft and uh, trying to get you surface photos because I know that everyone's hungry for those surface photos. Uh, but we got some uh, interesting data that gives us a position, um, an attitude of where the, where the lander is and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, we have uh, so, uh, the sun impinging on the solar arrays and uh, charging our batteries. Uh, we are providing power to the spacecraft and we're at 100% state of charge. That's fantastic. Um, I talked to you about the communications and uh, we will be taking an image, uh, hopefully, this weekend from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, to find the lander and pinpoint its location uh, in the South Pole region of the moon. We think we came down with, like I said, about six miles an hour this way and about two miles an hour this way and caught a foot in the surface and the, and the lander has tipped like this. And we believe this is the, surf, the, the orientation of the lander on the moon. Let me congratulate Intuitive Machines for three major accomplishments. The first, as Steve said, is for having the first a successful soft landing on the moon by the United States since 1972. The second is for being the first non-government commercial organization to actually touch down safely on the surface of the moon. And the third is for having um, a touchdown point um, 80 degrees south latitude, much closer to the south pole of the moon than any earlier a U.S. robotic or human explorers. In two of machines, though, however, in doing a soft touchdown on the moon has provided the first real evidence that this is possible to do. It's possible with today's technology, with dedicated engineering and appropriate financial management to have a private company actually design a spacecraft, develop a mission, buy a rocket, and fly all the way to the moon and soft land on the surface of the moon. Not just in an area where we landed earlier, decades ago, near the equator with the Apollo missions, but in the unusual territory of the South Pole, which is the focus of our future human Artemis missions. This is a gigantic accomplishment. I could not be prouder of our operations team and our engineers for putting together Odysseus, which was a marvelous machine. And to look at the moon every night now and know that uh, we have new hardware there, that we had a hand in building in our lifetime, something I couldn't say before, um, it really was a, a magical, magical day. And so having this successful landing today allows us to gear up and get ready to do more of this going forward to enable the um, Artemis uh, endeavor of repeated access to the surface and eventual um, uh, landing of humans on the, um, on the surface and, and um, sustained presence on the surface with infrastructure laying on. And so this is the first step in allowing for that and a great day for allowing us to um, um, get ready for more to come as we go forward. intended to land right around 1724. That's 524 p.m. Central Time. But know that there is some give and take. We're also expecting, plan for, and train for a little bit of loss of communication during this process. 1,000 meters call out from NDL that is coming from flight management. And again, that's the time of touchdown. It may take some time to actually confirm the status of the lander. And in this process, we do have a deployment of Eagle Cam attempting to take the third person images of Nova C going down to the lunar surface. We are inside of one minute, Gary. 
All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM1. We're evaluating uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. Uh, what an outstanding effort. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the, si on the surface and we are transmitting and uh, welcome to the moon. They're monitoring every step and all the data coming from Nova C ahead of PDI, which is scheduled just a little bit after 5.11 p.m. Central Time. This is an autonomous lunar lander, and flight controllers are monitoring communications and tracking the progress right along with the public right now with us. Nova C has the helm. It Cheers erupted in Houston's mission control after the first American moon landing in more than half a century on Thursday. And it was done by a private sector spacecraft, the first ever to touch the lunar surface. The uncrewed six-legged lander named Odysseus was developed by Intuitive Machines, a company based in Texas. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Odysseus's landing came after a nail-biting final approach and descent, and there was a problem with the spacecraft's autonomous navigation system. Engineers had to deploy an untested workaround at the 11th hour. Then there was a radio blackout, which was anticipated, and it took time for mission control to re-establish contact. When communications did come back, the signal was faint, but it confirmed that Odysseus had touched down. Still, NASA and the company said it left mission control uncertain as to its precise condition and position. The spacecraft was not designed to provide live video of the event. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson called the historic feat a triumph. Odysseus has taken the moon. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. And lift off. It took around a week for Odysseus to reach the moon after launching from Earth on a rocket from Elon Musk's company SpaceX. The lander carries an array of scientific instruments and technology demonstrations for NASA and several commercial customers. It's designed to operate for seven days on solar energy before the sun sets over the South Pole landing site. NASA says the data collected will help it prepare to return astronauts to the moon later this decade as part of a long-term sustained initiative of lunar exploration and a stepping stone toward eventual human flights to Mars.